This is Airy TV D viewers. Welcome to English News Broadcast for this hour. I'm your reporter, Bersa Betakhla, and following are the major headlines for today. Eritrean Festival in the U.S. concludes. Contribution made to augment Martyrs Trust Fund. China calls on Philippines to move grounded worship from disputed reef. And scouts prepare to leave South Korean campsite ahead of typhoon. On your local news, Eritrean festival in the U.S. that was underway from 4 August in Seattle under the team Heroic Feet anchored on cohesive ranks concluded yesterday 7 August. The festival was highlighted by program portraying the history of the armed struggle for independence, ancient history of Eritrea, cultural identity of the Eritrean people, resilience of the Eritrean people against external hostilities, public diplomacy activities, seminars on the objective situation in the homeland and regional developments, as well as sports competitions. In his concluding remark, Mr. Burhan Gebrahiwet, Charge de Fait at the Eritrean Embassy, commended the strong participation and unity the nationals, especially the youth, demonstrated during the festival days. Mr. Efrem Mahari, chairman of the Holidays Coordinating Committee, on his part expressed appreciation to those that contributed to the successful implementation of the festival and the Seattle municipality. At the conclusion event of the festival, awards have been handed out to winners of various competitions and to those that made special contribution in organizing the festival. Nationals in various countries contributed $12,300 and $235,000 NAFA as well as €1,330 towards augmenting the National Trust Fund and in supporting families of martyrs. According to the report from the Ministry of Labor and Social Welfare, Mr. Goitom Tesfai contributed 100,000 NAFA towards augmenting the National Trust Fund. Mr. Yafet Tsagai from the U.S. with his family and friends contributed 135,000 NAFA in support of families of martyrs. Likewise, Eritrean community in Geneva, Switzerland contributed 6,480 in support of nine families of martyrs. A family in Calgary, Canada contributed $1,440 in support of two families of martyrs. Two citizens in Geneva contributed $1,440 in support of two families of martyrs. Cooperative Association in Germany contributed $1,500 in support of two families of martyrs. Nationals in Hanover contributed $1,440 in support of two families of martyrs. And two citizens in Germany contributed €1,330 Euros in support of two families of martyrs. On your last local report, as part of the effort to expand health service nationwide, a new health station has become operational in Asmat subzone. The health station is expected to provide health service to residents of the villages of Shigali, Akwar, Hawatni, and Milmilta. Mr. Mohammed Umar Usman, administrator of the Shigali administrative area, said that previously the residents were compelled to travel over five hours to seek health treatment, and that with the new health station in their area, their problem has been alleviated. Mr. Usman Adam, administrator of the subzone, called on the residents to make proper use of the health center and to follow up for its sustainability. Dear viewers, do stay tuned for your international reports after the short break. Welcome back. China's foreign ministry has repeated a call for the Philippines to move a grounded World War II warship from a reef in the disputed South China Sea. 
The renewed demand to tow the ship comes after the Philippines accused China's Coast Guard of firing water cannon at boats on a mission to resupply the Philippine garrison stationed on the ground vessel. According to China's foreign ministry, China has communicated to the Philippines on the second Thomas Shoal issue many times through diplomatic channels, but its goodwill and sincerity have been ignored. The Philippine side has repeatedly made clear promises to tow away the warship illegally stranded on the reef, a spokesperson for China's foreign ministry said. 24 years have passed. The Philippine side has not only failed to tow away the warship, but also attempted to repair and reinforce it on a large scale to achieve permanent occupation of the Runai Reef, the spokesperson added. On today's final report, Scouts were seen preparing for evacuation from the World Scout Jamburi campsite in the South Korean seat of Buwan today, ahead of an approaching typhoon. Organizers said on Monday that tens of thousands will be moved from the campsite in an area of reclaimed land in southwestern Joala province. Around 36,000 participants will be taken by bus to areas away from the path of the typhoon Kanun, which has already wrecked havoc in southern Japan and is expected to hit South Korea on Thursday, August 10. The storm comes after one of the worst heat waves to hit South Korea in years, which caused hundreds of scouts to fall ill. Officials are seeking alternate venues and accommodations in, in and around Seoul. The jamboree, which is scheduled to run until August 12, will still continue. You're still watching us on Airy TV, dear viewers, and now a quick recap of the major headlines. Eritrean Festival in the U.S. concludes. Contribution made to Augment Martyrs Trust Fund. China calls on Philippines to move grounded worship from disputed reef. And scouts prepare to leave South Korean campsite ahead of typhoon. The viewers, that was it for today. Thanks for watching and have a good one.